So, this is the equation we know so far. We're not going to use this equation particularly. We're going to expand it and you'll see why. This is actually, let's say, separated into two parameters. One is called phi, the other one is called c prime. The mu is actually more related to the phi prime rather than the c prime. But basically what I want to show you here is that for soil, the relationship does not, is not mu. It's, it's the, the relationship is described by two parameters. Okay, you'll see how this come about. How do we do this? Okay, one way, and this is the way we're going to, to, to learn in this class, is the direct shear test, right, that we, you know how to do. And you're going to do at least three tests. Three tests. Now, what do you do? Well, test number one. Take your, sa your sample, right? Place it in the direct shear device. Place a load that divided by the area is equal to a stress. And then you monitor delta. Well, you push this and monitor the force T, right? And of course, what will happen is there will be a failure surface here, and then you will plot. Now, important. When you apply a weight here, or impose a weight, who takes the load, meaning in the soil, the water or the grains? Remember that this whole apparatus is submerged in water, so this soil is saturated. So if you place a load here, a weight for example, the water in the pores is going to carry the load first and consolidation will then occur so as to so as for the water to transfer the load to the grains, right? So there will be a little, generally there's a little uh, settlement or deformation, uh, axial deformation of the specimen of course due to consolidation. Now the way these tests are done is as follows. You place the weight on top and then you wait. You wait until consolidation of the specimen ends. At that point you know that the particles are, carry the weight, are carrying the weight that you applied and therefore you can place a prime here to denote that. This is the effective stress, the stress that the particles carry. Once that is done, meaning once consolidation ends and you place a prime here because you know the particles are carrying the load that you imposed, then you start the shearing stage, which means that you start pushing the top to create this failure surface and to plot this curve. Okay? That curve is for this effective stress. Let's say that this effective stress is, let me see, I have it written some numbers over here. Yeah, let's say this effective stress is 15 kPa. Okay, so you impose 15 kPa for this test, test number one, and this is the curve that you got. So then you can extract the strength, critical state, which is, let's say, 20 kPa. Okay? Number two, test two. For test two, you take another, another sample of the same exact soil, of course, because remember, you're trying to get the relationship between strength and stress for a specific soil. That is why we are doing all this. Okay? So, same thing. You apply a stress. <clears throat> you wait for consolidation to end. Therefore, you can place a prime here. You run a direction test. And let's say in this, this was 15, right? Let's say in this case, this is 5. So lower. <coughs> a lower stress. You impose a lower stress, you run the test, and you plot it in the same plot. In this case, you may get something like this. Maybe a little peak or not even, maybe no peak. Okay, so this is for an effective stress of 5 kPa. Same soil, of course. Critical state strength in this case 
let's say it's 15 kPa. Notice that S is a tau, of course. All right, now number three, <clears throat> test number three. Same thing, right? Apply a stress, wait for consolidation to end. You can place now a prime here. Let's say in this case, uh, it's, what did I write over here? 30 kPa. So let's say that you apply a stress of 30 kPa, then you run the director test. And in this case, <clears throat> your curve will be appear higher, like that. Okay, so, okay, sorry, I ran out of space. All right, so um, we were saying that we ran one test with 15 kPa, strength is 20. Another test with the same soil, right, another sample, but this exactly the same soil. Um, we applied a stress of 5, we run the test and we get a strength of 15 kPa and then the last one we run with 30 kPa and the strength we got was 25 let's say kPa so remember we run this test to measure the strength <clears throat> for the stresses that we have applied on the specimens Okay, now you may ask, well, why is it that a soil that a soil, you know, we, we put the same soil in the three tests, how come they have different strengths if they are the same exact soil? Well, of course you know that the difference is because this soil down here, which is plotted, the results for which are plotted here, right, the soil down here is loaded with 30 kPa before shearing, whereas this one is loaded with 5 kPa before shearing. So, let's put a little note up here. If you take a, a block that weighs very little, right, the normal stress here is low, normal force, let's say, so the force required to push the block is small, because the, the block weighs very little. Now, if the block is made of lead or something and weighs a lot, then you're going to have to use push with a big force to push it, to actually cause it to slide, even though the coefficient of friction may be the same for both cases. Okay, so in the case of soil, I like to use the example where <clears throat> if you're looking at this interface, for soil would be looking at that interface right here between soil and soil particles grinding against each other basically along this failure surface so one way to do it or to think about it is to think well I would have to go I can't because of the tripod that I have behind my hands but that is the interface right these are particles particles so if I press my knuckles together hard that's a high effective stress between the grains right? If I press together hard, it's going to be hard for me to sh cause shear, right? Whereas if I softly press the particles together, which implies a small effective stress, then it's very easy to shear. So the strength is low. See, if I press them together, strength is high. There's actually interlocking. But if I press them together softly, you know, it's easy to shear. So that's what happens. Basically, that's what happens in here. The grains grinding against each other, they're just like knuckles. At high stress, you have a high strength. Low stress, you have a low strength. So even though you have the same soil, you have different strengths, right? For different imposed stresses. Now, that is the first part of the procedure to determine the relationship. Remember the relationship between the strength and the stress imposed, which in this case we could put a prime here right? Because we're talking about effective stress, stress that the particles feel, not the water. And that relationship is described by these two parameters, <coughs> which we haven't figured out yet. We're going to do that now. So, you take the data, and you extract the coordinates 
for points that you're going to plot in the more circle space. Effective stress, tau. Instead of tau, what we can do is put a comma and say strength, because strength is a tau. So we're going to plot strength, the three strengths, versus the three effective stresses. Very simple. So, the more circle space needs to be plotted perfectly. So I wish I had engineering paper, but I don't. In your case, you should always do this with a ruler or engineering paper. Okay, so not perfect, but you know, it's okay. <clears throat> At least for this lecture. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay? So, first one. Effective stress 5, strength 15. 5, 15. That's test number 2. Okay? Next one. Stress effective 15, strength 20. So 15, 20. That's test number <clears throat> 1. And then the last one, um, effective stress 30, strength 25, test 3. Okay, so we have three points in the more circle space. Now, what we do to get the relationship is we look at the points and we realize that they fall for, for the you know, for a rough approximation, basically, they fall on a straight line. So, look, if we apply a stress of 5, we'll get 15 as a strength, which we did, right? Of course, it's a point. If we apply a, strength of, a stress of 15, we get a strength of 20. If we apply a stress of 10, we may get a strength of about 17, right? So we are basically saying that the relationship between the stress and the strength is denoted by a line which we as engineers decide to create by best fitting the, cur the, the points. This angle is phi prime. So this is an angle, okay? And this intercept here, this value, is called C prime. And C prime is a tau. It is a strength actually, because it's on the strength envelope. Strength envelope. The strength envelope is the relationship between the stress effective that acts on a failure plane and the stress Maximum stress that can be sustained there, which is the strength. Okay? So this line is the relationship. That's what we're looking for. And of course, the relationship is, is described by phi prime and C prime. Why? What is the equation of a line? Y is equal to mx plus b, right? Let's write it in this case, for this line. What's y? Strength. What's m? The slope. Now, for slope, what we can do is get this angle and take the tangent of it. X plus B. B is the intercept. So C prime. So generally, for elegance, we put this sigma prime back here. So we say critical state is equal to sigma prime tangent P prime plus C prime. Okay? That is the strength equation. That is the relationship between strength and effective stress. And it is, uh, of course, uh, it reflects two properties of the soil. This is a soil property, and this is a soil property. The internal friction angle is a soil property. 
is a property of this particular soil that you put in the three specimens or you put in these three uh, direction test devices these are specimens of soil okay and this is called the cohesion like bonding cohesion right intercept why intercept because it's the intercept of the line the b y is equal to mx plus b okay so that's it this is the relationship when we run the direct shear tests or we we, did, we want to determine the strength properties of a soil strength parameters we're looking for that one and that one these are material dependent okay they vary from soil to soil some soils have C prime equals zero. I'll tell you a little bit about this in a second. Okay? Now, um, well, let's discuss this too before we actually do an example where you will see how this is used. The internal friction angle is an angle, of course. The, the units are in degrees. Okay? And that tells you the relationship again, the slope, right, which is a relationship between this and this. The effective stress and the strength. This one is part of the relationship because it's the intercept. So look, for zero effective stress, the strength is C prime. So we're saying that if there's zero stress between my knuckles, there is still a strength. How can that be? I mean, if, if, I, if, if the knuckles are not touching, I ensure that there's zero stress between them, right? There's no resistance. So how come a soil can exhibit a strength called C prime when the effective stress is zero? It's actually very simple. Sometimes the grains are bonded. They're glued together. Okay, so we can take um, plastic, for example, or cement, Portland cement, and inject it into the soil or resin, right? And cause the grains to bond. So if you have here, in here, a soil where the grains are bonded, you're going to get, when you do all this stuff, and you draw your line, you're going to get a C prime. C prime also emerges when the grains are bonded by electrical forces or electrical agents, let's call them, okay? So um, you may get Definitely, of course, particularly for, for soils that are fine-grained, you may get a C prime. And that's part of the strength. That is the strength at zero stress. The C prime, the value, in this case is about 12 kPa, right? 5, 10, 15, so this is about 12 kPa for this soil. Okay? That is dependent on the strength of the bond. Okay? The strength of the material that makes the cement or the bond between the grains. For example, you may have calcium carbonate, that's a natural cement agent that cements grains together. In that case, this value would reflect the strength of that calcium carbonate. Okay? All right. So, uh, what else? Okay. So, this is a, the relationship. This is what you want when you run the tests. You want phi prime and C prime for the soil. Now, 